come join me by the candlelight. <laughs> New Orleans is known for its parties, especially around Mardi Gras, and this year was no exception. It was a week before Mardi Gras, and all of New Orleans was ramping up for one hell of a party. Marley had got wind of a secret party out in the Atchafalaya Basin, and it was supposed to be a doozy. She was leaving work when she noticed a flyer that had been taped to the door. Looking for some pre-Mardi Gras fun? Call 555-7860. She took the flyer just for kicks, figuring it might be something to do since she was off work this weekend. She made her way home after picking up a pizza, and lo and behold, there was Jeremy waiting for her on the porch. Marley and Jeremy used to be an item a couple of years ago, but came to the conclusion they were better off as friends. Hey there, Jeremy. No hot date tonight? Not tonight, Marley. But, seems by that pizza in your hands, that goes for the both of us. You can't eat that entire pizza by yourself. <laughs> What are you doing this weekend? No particular plans. Why? What's up? I found a flyer at work. There's supposed to be a secret party out in the Atchafalaya Basin Saturday night. You want to come? Sure. Why not? There's going to be some fun out there. Saturday came quick enough. They started the long drive out to the basin. So, who's supposed to be behind this big secret party? You remember Johnny LaRue? Sure, but I haven't seen him in ages. What's he got to do with it? Well, according to a couple of people, Johnny LaRue is supposedly throwing this party. I guess he's throwing himself a big welcome back party, huh? They were getting closer. They could see the lights coming through the trees. The basin looked eerily beautiful tonight, especially with the full moon shining down upon it. The basin was always a magical place, but at night, it seemed almost mystical. As they got closer, they could hear Doug Kershaw music blaring. That cinches it, Jeremy. It's gotta be Johnny LaRue. Johnny was a huge Doug Kershaw fan, and to Johnny LaRue, the only music was Doug Kershaw music. The beer and liquor was flowing and it seemed half of New Orleans was there. But there were quite a few unfamiliar faces there, too. Who are those guys hanging around Johnny? Not a clue. But they seem pretty intense. Hey, y'all. I figured I'd see you here. Why don't y'all just make it official again and call yourselves a couple? Lottie worked at the video store with Marley and had been friends with the pair for years. Those guys haven't left Johnny's side since he came back to town, and it's not just those guys that seem strange. Have you talked to Johnny? Something is very different about him. I noticed he bulked up a hell of a lot. It's not just that. There's something. I can't put my finger on it, but he's different somehow. There was something different about Johnny LaRue. Very different. When Johnny made his exit, he was a slim man, around six foot, but slender with no muscle or form to speak of. When he came back, he looked like he could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Terminator and come out on top. Johnny had been a shy man, not a lot of self-esteem, but now he exuded confidence. The trio looked up and saw Johnny and his entourage making their way towards them. Johnny came up and took Marley's hand and kissed it lightly. Well, look who came to my party. Pretty little Marley. Johnny had always had a bit of a crush on Marley, but was too shy to ever do anything about it. He wasn't shy now. This Johnny was anything but shy. Marley seemed a bit taken with this new version of Johnny LaRue, and Jeremy wasn't liking it one bit. He was very protective of Marley, and something just wasn't sitting right. Something was really off about this whole thing. The night went on, and Doug Kershaw music was still streaming through the basin. So, what made you decide to come back, Johnny? You've been gone for quite a while. 
Johnny looked at Marley with an almost crooked grin. Things change, little Marley. People change. Sometimes, it's just time to come home. Well, I'm glad you decided to come back. Johnny, with a sly grin, let's see if you feel that way by the end of the night. Instead of dying down, the party seemed to be gaining momentum. A few of Johnny's entourage had disappeared, and a few of the guests along with them. Jeremy had went to refill his cup when he heard a sharp howl. Did you hear that, Lottie? Yeah, I did, and that's not the first one I've heard. I'm about to head home. I've had my fill for one night. Jeremy decided to do the same. I'm going to go find Marley and head out too. It didn't take long to find Marley. She was there by the edge of the woods, still talking to Johnny. Come on, Marley. It's time to go. I've got work tomorrow. You can't leave yet. You'll miss my big surprise. Hey, where'd your bodies go? They've been by your side since we got here. Oh, don't worry about them. They're around here somewhere. Johnny looked up as the moon was reaching its peak. Now it's time, little Marley. Johnny threw his head back and howled. His body started contorting. The black leather jacket was ripping apart. Jeremy and Marley looked on in horror, too terrified to run. Not that it would do any good. Lottie was standing by the drink table when a huge wolf came charging at her. Just as it got close, it turned its head to the side and opened its huge mouth. It cut Lottie in two with one bite. <coughs> the echoes screamed throughout the Atchafalaya Basin. When Johnny's transformation was complete, there, where Johnny had stood, was a huge black wolf in his place. He stepped past Marley and seemed to push her out of the way. He looked at Jeremy with his glowing eyes and opened his mouth so wide his jaws seemed to dislocate. He took Jeremy's head off with one swift bite. What had been a party just moments before was now a field of slaughter. There were body parts everywhere. Those that tried to run didn't make it far. Johnny and his entourage were biting, chewing, and slashing their way through the entire crowd. Marley looked on in horror, but wondered why she was exempt from the bloodbath. Johnny turned from the others and came towards her slowly. She still couldn't run. Her feet were frozen to their spot. Johnny was staring right at her and getting closer. Marley woke up in searing pain. Her right shoulder was the source. Her shirt was slashed and when she looked, there were four large, very deep slashes down her shoulder and chest. The field was empty now. Only blood remained. She made her way to her car to go for help, but she knew no one would believe her story. It seemed insane even to her, and she witnessed the entire thing. It was a long drive back, and Marley's pain was intense. She got to the ER, but had no idea what she would tell them. She left out the part about the slaughter. After all, this was New Orleans. She could tell them she was at a party and woke up this way. They cleaned and bandaged Marley's wounds and sent her on her way. The nurse told her to make sure to change the bandage the next day. The next morning, Marley went to the shower and removed the bandages to find. Nothing. It was as if it never happened. The only proof was the blood-soaked bandages in the trash. Marley disappeared shortly after the party. You see, Johnny always had a thing for little Marley, and he finally acted on it.